Hi, I'm Mark Hummel. Welcome to the Harmonica Party. We're we'd like to invite you to be a guest at the party. You can do that by supporting us right here at Patreon. See you then. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, when, once you made it to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. you're here with, with Willie and, I mean, with Lester and Joe, right? And George. And George, okay. Major. That was the four was, of you. That was uh, five brothers here at the time. Right, but it was four of you singing or George, five? George, Major, Douglas, me, Les, six brothers. Here. But how many were singing in the group? Yeah, four. Four George, of them. Lester, Joe, and myself. Right, okay. Yeah. And so did you guys right away start singing in churches around here? Well, when we first got here, there was a gentleman that we got introduced to. You guys ought to come to my church. We joined that church, and I'm still a member of that church. Wow. Back in the country, working in the fields every day, we all we always said to mom and dad that someday we're going to buy you guys a house. And they would lie and say, yeah, <laughs> that'll be the day. Right. But we really meant it. You guys did it, we too, I would think. It, yeah. yeah, I we're bet you did. We're sitting in that house right now. Oh, really? Okay. Right now we'll see this is the house. That house. That's amazing. So when we signed with Columbia Records. Yeah. That's when you bought this? That's when we bought this. We, wow. we got money. We have a mutual friend, Carol Perry, that uh, that that I know had a, was instrumental in kind of helping you guys. Carol Perry. Yeah. Carol Perry worked at a little hamburger right. That's place so right mean. across the yeah. street from the, the university, the college over on Vermont. Mm -hmm. Carol, we would go hang there because, like, we didn't have money. Yeah. We were trying to be a group. And he would give you free burgers or something? We would hang around there. And right. we'll, and by, you know, after a while, everybody got a burger. And then eventually, he ended up at the Ash Grove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he uh -huh. had something to do with you guys playing there, I assume. He told me he was kind of the peacemaker between the musicians <laughs> and Ed Pearl. <laughs> that was the way he put it. I don't know. Was, well, that's what he claimed. He claimed that uh, like guys like Lightning or Big Joe would come in. And we were just kind of sad when he left the hamburger joint. Right, <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> well, I hope he fed you at the Ash Grove, too. Uh, probably. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Lightning Hopkins was there. And uh, there was a, a, a record producer by the name of Bumps Blackwell. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. I had, be, I had become yeah. acquainted with him. Right. And this was before uh, my brothers learned how to, to play instruments. Right. You know, we were still waiting for them to learn to play But you were playing guitar by then, right? I started playing guitar when I was four years old. Right. I never had to learn. I could, the very first time I had a guitar, I could play the thing. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what you do. I don't know to this day why or uh, what would make me even think she would let me play that guitar. Mm -hmm. But the words came out of my mouth, Grandma, let me play the guitar. Mm -hmm. She stopped and she looked at me like, you're going to be out of your mind. And then she was <laughs> thinking, I have to take that better keep it out of my hair. She went over, she opened the trunk, took it out, and she said, sit down. She made me sit down in the middle of the floor. And she put the guitar across my lap. And she says, you better not get up with it either because I would bang it up. You know? Right, right. You better not get up with it. And she started to walk away. And I started playing this blues song. Baby, please don't go back huh. to New Orleans. Yeah. I love you so, baby, please. She tries. She says, oh, my God. You can play the guitar. I, I thought that's what you're supposed to do. That's crazy, I yeah. I thought that's what that's you crazy. do. Because my brother, Major, who she had bought the guitar for, lived with her and Grandpa. That's, that's you know an amazing thing? What's that? Look at that. Yeah. 
My grandpa is a white man. Wow. That's my grandpa and my grandma. That's amazing. When he was a baby, her mother, Grandma Judy, uh -huh. she was a nanny. She took care of all the, uh -huh. all the babies, white babies, black right. babies, all right. the babies. She was a nanny. And she took care of him when he was a baby. Hmm. Well, she was a baby at the same time. Incredible. And when he became of age, he said to his family, he says, I want to get married. Well, naturally, everybody said, hey, great. And he says, I want to marry Purdy. And his family says, you can't marry Purdy. He says, but I love Purdy. You, you can't marry Purdy. She's a black girl. He and says, how old was he? Maybe 20, 19, 20, mm -hmm. 20 years, 21 years old, something. But they were babies together. Yeah. Yeah, they grew up together. Yeah. yeah. And he says, I love Purdy. I want to marry Purdy. You can't marry Purdy. She's a black girl. I don't care. I love her. I want to marry her. So they argued back and forth with that, and the, he convinced them that he wants to marry her. Yeah. So they kicked him out of the family, gave him eighty. Wow. Gave, gave him eighty acres of land and kicked him out. Unbelievable. So, so and in Mississippi, there's an eighty-acre farm that belongs to the family. Yeah. It belonged to him. <clears throat> That's amazing. Grandpa Jake. He was great, man. He was he was great. Then it, it never all all I ever knew, he had long, straight hair. Hmm. And he looked white. But yeah. it was never it was never, never like something he, that it was, was brought not up. Like yeah. he was a white man. Right. Never brought well, up. Well you can see very well that he yeah. is. 